Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printing here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to generate email confirmation links so that when someone signs up to your app and they specify an email, you can send an email to that person and then have them click on a link to confirm that it is in fact their email. You've probably seen this before in other apps, so if you don't know how to do it, this will reveal all the magic behind it. But before I get into that, I wanna show you my Flask cheat sheet that I made. It has a few common things that you do in Flask that you can quickly refer to by looking at this cheat sheet. So if you haven't downloaded it already, you can get it at prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet. I'll have a link in the description below if you didn't get that. All right, so the first thing you need to do is have a mail server set up so you can send emails. Here's my configuration file. It doesn't look like this exactly, but I have my configuration in there. And basically you need the server, the username, and the password. Uh, you should be able to find this in your settings for your email account. Depends on what email you account you use. Sometimes it would be easy, sometimes it would be hard. But a lot of email accounts allow you to set up um, a server elsewhere so you can have like a third-party client interact with your email account. So just find that information. Uh, make sure you get the outgoing information because you're sending emails. You don't care about incoming emails. So these are some of the settings for mine. Uh, I use port 465, I use SSL, and I don't use TLS. And then my server, username, and password are in the actual configuration file. Just know that when you're running this and you're testing it out, if you get any weird errors, it's probably your configuration. Uh, the errors that are returned when you do stuff like this aren't very good, so just keep that in mind if you get any errors. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is I'll import Flask. And then I'll be importing from Flask mail as well. So I'm going to import the mail class and the message class. So first thing I'll do is I'll instantiate the app. And I'll load the configuration from my file. So from pyfile config.cfg. And then I'll instantiate the mail part. So mail app. And then I'll add the if block down here to actually run the app. So pretty straightforward so far. So the first part that I want to build is a simple form for someone to submit an email. So the way it's going to work is you type in an email and press submit, and then it will take that email, send you an email, and then in that email will be a confirmation link for you to click and confirm your email. So I'll create the route for the form. So it's going to be in on the index and I'll make it simple. So how about this? I'll make it to where it takes both get and post requests. So get and post, and then I'll import the request object so I can use that in an if statement. So if request.method is get, I'm going to return a form. So form type or form action is going to be the index. Method is going to be post. It's going to have one input name, email, and then a submit button. So that should be enough for the form. So just to make sure the form works, I'm going to return the email. So the email you insert is blank. Now format that with request form email. So let's see if that works. Let me start up the server. Python app. Okay, so I'll go to the index. I see the form and I'll type in an email, random at email.com. Submit, and the email you entered is random at email.com. So that part is working, that's good. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to be able to generate tokens that will be inserted in the link to confirm the email. So to do this, I have to import from It's Dangerous, which is a library that allows you to serialize strings using a secret key. So the serializer that I'm going to use is the URL safe timed serializer. 
I think I spelled that right. So what this means is URL safe means you can take the output of this serializer and put it in a URL. The other serializer is not guaranteed to give you output that is URL friendly. So that's why it's called URL safe. And then timed means that you can put a time limit on it. So it can expire after a minute, an hour, a day, however long you want it. So that's good for email confirmation links because you wouldn't want to send someone an email confirmation and have that link be active forever. You want it to be active for only like an hour or a day. So once it's dangerous is imported, you're going to create a serializer or instantiate one. So call the class and then you're passing in a secret value. Now this can be your secret key for your app. So one way to do that is app config secret key, but I don't have a secret key. So I'm just going to put in a value, but just know that this value is supposed to be secret. So keep it safe. Um, this is a secret. So once you have the serializer, then you can start generating the, the token. So in my route here, instead of returning just the email you insert, I'm going to return a token as well. So to generate the token, you can just create a variable called token and then call S, which is the serializer and then dumps and then the email that is passed in. So in this case, it will be request form email. Let me just create a variable. So I don't have to use it more than once. So email, and then you can use a salt as well. The salt isn't a salt in the case of like typical hashing and set the salt is a way to kind of separate tokens that use the same input value. So if you use a token for email confirmation and you use a token for your session and they both use the email as the base, then you need a salt to make them different. So I'll call this email confirm as the salt but you don't need the salt if you're only using it in one particular case. So that's completely up to you. So once you generate the token, I'm going to return it and I'll make this bigger by using a header. So H1, and then I'll say the token is blank. And this will be the email variable and then I'll pass in the token. So I'll run this again, random at email.com. And it says the email you entered is random at email.com. And the token is all this text right here. So that's eventually going to go into a URL. So let's start building that route that handles the token. So we'll call this confirm underscore email. It's going to be get, but it's going to take in a variable and that variable is going to be the token. So I'll name it confirm email. And remember when you're using a variable in the route, you have to have the parameter in the function as well. So what you're going to do once you have the route set up, you'll get the email back by just reversing the process. So you use the serializer again, the object, and then you use loads instead of a dumps, and then you pass in the token, and then the salt that you use. And make sure the salt's the same, otherwise the load won't work. And finally, you can put a max age, since this is a timed token. So max age, let's put 60 for 60 seconds. And then I'm going to return the token works. Actually, let's make this 20 seconds. So I'll show you what happens when it expires. So the token works should get returned if everything is okay. If everything isn't okay, you'll see what happens in a moment. So let's do this again. I'll enter random at email.com. I'll submit the query and then I'll take the token and then I'll go confirm slash, and then I'll add the token. And I get a 404. So let's see where things went wrong. 
I think because I use confirm to not confirm email. Yep. So confirm email. Okay. So you see the signature expired and it's telling me that the signature age is 25 and it's greater than 20 seconds. And that's because I messed up the route and I didn't do it fast enough. So let's try that again. Random at email.com. I'll take this and then I'll go to confirm email slash the token works. Okay. So if I wait a bit, if I wait about 15 more seconds and I refresh this, then it won't work. So I just hit it again. It still works, still works. And in a few seconds it will expire. There we go. So now because the age of the token is 24 seconds, the signature is expired and I can't use it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'll import signature expired from X it's dangerous and I'll catch it here. So I have try and then I'll catch signature expired. I'm thinking JavaScript is try accept. So try accept and I'll say the token is expired. That way it's a friendlier message instead of the error screen. So I'll do that and I'll change the age to 10 seconds so we can see it working a lot faster. So I'll go back to the index. I'll try a different email. Let's do another email at mail.com. So I'll copy this. I'll go slash confirm email slash that and the token works. I'll wait a few seconds and the token should be expired. But instead of getting that ugly air screen, I should get my message back because I'm catching that exception. So now I see the token is expired, which is exactly what I want. And if I change the token a little bit, I get another error, which is bad time signature. So you can handle that in the same way that you handle the expired signature, but I'm not going to cover that case. So one last thing before I move on from this is this is where you would set a column in your database or just in your object in your database to true for email confirmed. So one way to do it is when a user first creates an account, you create the account in the database, but you leave the confirmed email column as false. And then once they click on the link and in this route here, that's when they click on the link, then you update that column in the database to confirmed equals true. So you know that that user has been confirmed. So now that the confirm route is taken care of, the last thing I need to do is actually email this link to whoever uh, typed in the email. So what I'll do here is underneath the token generation, I'll create a message using Flask mail. So I'll call it MSG and I'll call a message and I'll just say uh, confirm email is the subject. The sender in my case is going to be Anthony at prettyprintit.com and the recipients will be whoever uses the form. So it's going to take in the email from here. And then I'll modify the body to include the link. So before I do that, I need to actually generate the link. So link is going to be URL four. So I'll import that from flask URL four and URL four confirm email and then I'll pass in the token because it's the variable down here. So token is going to be equal to the token here. And then I need to specify external as true because this is going to be a link outside of my application, not a link within it. So now the body of my message will be message.body is your link is blank. And I'll format that and I'll say link here and that should add the link into my message body. So finally, if I hit, if I type mail, send message, 
that will send an email to all the recipients, which is the email that is used. So I don't have any errors. I'll go back to the form and let's see if it works. First, let me get a temporary email. I just typed in Google temporary email and here's one. So I'll copy and paste this and I'll put it in my form. So I'll hit submit query. And since I got this, the mail sent successfully, or at least it should have, just know that if you get any errors, like I said, it's probably your configuration. And I'll show you all the, I'll give you a link to all the configuration in the description below so you can check it and make sure that your email configuration matches with your actual email server. So let's see if I have a link. I do. So from Anthony at prettyprinter.com, I have this confirmed email. And then it's given me a link. And one little thing I messed up, this external should not be like that. It should be an external like this. So underscore external instead of just external. So I'll just do that again. Submit query. And now I'll delete this one. And I'll wait for the new one to come in. And I think it regenerated an email address for me. So I'll try it again. So I'll wait. And then once the email comes in, we'll see if the link is correct. Okay, so the email's here. I look at the link and now the link is correct. It's actually external. So I can click on it and it tells me the token is expired, which is fine because I had it set to 10 seconds. So let's use a more realistic example of an hour. So I'll save that and I'll try it one more time. So I'll generate a new email here. I'll delete that. Here's the new email. I'll insert my email into the form, submit it, wait for the email. So now I have the email here. I'll open it and click the link and I see the token works. So as we can see, it's pretty simple to generate confirmation URLs for email accounts. So this is probably something that would be useful in your app. So I suggest you implement it and it would make your app a little more secure. So people can't just sign up with a random email when they use your app. So if you have any questions about this video, just leave a comment down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.